Real quick, make sure you follow me on Twitter. My uh, Twitter handle is in the description, or the link, I should say, is in the description. Uh, my handle is at Jackson Kruger. So make sure you follow me there, say hello, and anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. So I know this isn't exactly a, a hot take or anything, but uh, the Packers offense was really good last year. Obviously, we know that. They were first in the NFL, but actually what's fun about it is if you look at the numbers, really about Aaron Rodgers himself, there's some just mind-boggling numbers that I feel like we should probably talk about a little bit more because, again, it's one of these weird things where somehow people are acting like last year was like a negative towards Aaron Rodgers because he didn't win a Super Bowl. Well, he's only won one Super Bowl. Last year was a clear positive in his career. It was one of his best seasons he's ever had, and he was the best quarterback in football last year, which is why he won the MVP award. And let's look at the numbers that really are just shocking. So first, let's look at right here. So this is kept clean versus under pressure, and that's his, his passer rating. That's the stat you see to the right. And, you know, that's the number we're going to use for all of this is passer rating. Uh, what's crazy about this stat in particular is how great he was when he was kept clean. Because when you're under pressure, well, that can kind of, uh, you know, deviate from season to season. You have a couple plays that go wrong that adds a couple interceptions. Now it looks way worse than it actually was. Or a couple plays go, you know, right that it uh, completely changes it in that direction. So there's just a lot of variance under pressure. Kept clean, it tends to not be very uh, variant, I guess is the way to say it. So the fact that he had such an incredible uh, year when he was clean, kept clean in the pocket, to me shows that this wasn't a fluke. He did not get lucky at this point in his career. He is legit this good, which of course we already knew, but this just confirms that. There's something like this, which is when he's throwing it, this is how far he throws it. Deep is 20 plus yards. Medium is in, uh, you know less than 20, but more than 10. Short is less than 10. Uh, and behind the line of scrimmage is behind the line of scrimmage. And if he's throwing it past the line of scrimmage, his passer rating is over 120, which again, just absolutely crazy. Granted, I mean, he had a passer rating of over 120, period. So it's not that crazy. But just got, what's, what's interesting to me about this stat is how even across the board he is once he throws uh, past the line of scrimmage, you know, uh, it seems like no matter where he's throwing it at that point, typically what happens is the further deep you go, the higher your passer rating gets. For him, it's just great throughout. But this is the real stat that's just mind blowing to me. One, they don't run play action, he still has a passer rating of 101. 111.1, a lot of ones there. But when the Packers do run play action, they, he has a pass rating of 137.2. That's just, I, I, don't, I can't, I can, I can barely comprehend that, quite frankly. That's just insane that they were that good with play action. And it kind of goes to show a little bit why they paid Aaron Jones so much money because they don't want to mess up that play action. Like right here, for example. So what's going to happen on this play is it's zone coverage. This is going to be a play action play. You have Devontae Adams run over the middle. Then you have a tight end flash over. This is what Green Bay loves to do. And you're going to see why. Because, you know, Adams is going to take up some pressure. And the corner who's sort of, you know, over him right now is going to kind of follow him over the middle of the field because that's what typically you do. Now, if there, there's another receiver who goes in that direction, you would hope that a Tennessee player could run over and get there. But the issue is it's going to be easy to lose a tight end when he's coming from the other side of the field. So while some teams would do this with like a halfback, doing it with a tight end actually makes a lot more sense. Because watch how, so it's a handoff to the offense's left, but then, you know, roll out to the right, throws it to Robert Tunyon, who at this point is just completely wide open. And it's not just the catch that's the good thing. It's going to be the yards after the catch. I mean, watch him just simply easily pick up, you know, uh, an explosive play right there, a 15 plus yard play. And that was really, you know, the offense didn't have to do anything, which kind of is such a big credit to Matt LaFleur that he can scheme up a play that's just an easy, you know, 15 plus yard completion. The fact that he can do that on a whim is incredible. He picked his play actions very well. And there's a reason why it was arguably the most effective play in football last year, not just this play action, but play actions as a whole. And by play actions as a whole, I mean just Packers play actions. And even stuff like this, this isn't a play action, but it's a very similar idea where you're going to, you know, it's a zone coverage play. And the reason why it's zone coverage is, well, 
partially it's because that's just what Atlanta did with Dan Quinn. But another aspect of why it's zone coverage is, you know, you run other teams into zone coverage. You have Aaron Jones, you run the ball a lot, you get teams into zone coverage, and that's the one you can do stuff like this, which is just a very simple play. It's similar to the last play. This is going to be with a halfback instead of the tight end, and there's no play action, but it's the same concept essentially. And again, watch how right when this play starts. So it's another wide open play it's not quite as open so you see the value in that last play and how it can open things up but the good thing about this play is it doesn't really rely on any deception you can just straight up do this and that's what they did Rodgers makes this throw it's not going to go for 15 yards but it goes for 10 in the first down I mean you'll take that every time but now we got to go over to this play because some people might be saying for a second well wait a second are you just saying that Matt LaFleur is the whole reason for the success this seems like a Matt LaFleur video not an Aaron Rodgers video and the reality is it's both but the reality is it's both I mean both guys really have a huge impact in this offense and what's so great about it is because uh, LaFleur can sort of set things up for Rodgers you really get to see Rodgers thrive so like on this play it's again a similar zone buster type play a little bit different though because it's going to be further down the field you have a receiver run deep who's he's the guy who's clearing out that deep corner and now it's going to be a halfback who's also running deep this is something I love about LaFleur is he's not afraid to get his halfbacks into a play get him down to field even if they're in a halfback position which is creative and I think good and watch how right when this play starts so it's going to get open really quickly and you're going to see just a cannon of a throw and you see how open it gets it was open but also Rodgers can just make these throws like so effectively he's you know a guy who when something gets open immediately, he throws it immediately. And this Packers offense was such a well-oiled machine. And a big part of it was Aaron Rodgers and the fact that he can just, you know, in a second, he has that quick release and that big arm. And this one is going to be complete for a big gain, of course. And one more thing I wanted to talk about is a play like this. So this is man coverage. This is a very simple concept you have Marquez Valdez Scantling who's running a go route towards the sideline Rodgers is basically going to just throw up a jump ball to him and you know a lot of Packers fans were kind of I feel like a little bit smugly saying oh everyone said the Packers needed another receiver but we had the best offense in football to me I would say that their offense was so good and what they do well they do so well that I still actually think that they could have used another receiver they just did other things so good. Like, you think about something like this. So, this ball is going to be snapped. Rodgers makes this throw. And it's just not going to be able to be complete there by Valdez Scantling, even though it was a great throw. And that happened from time to time. I mean, the reality is, when Tom Brady made that throw, uh, his number two and three receivers were Chris Godwin and Antonio Brown. So, those guys made the catch. And I think that Rodgers' numbers could have been even better had he had a solid number two receiver. And to me, that's just truly a testament to how good this LaFleur Rodgers combination is. And I'm excited we get we get at least one more year of it. Hopefully more, I would say, because it's such a beautiful combination and those guys work so well together. And you've seen why Rodgers has had just sort of this resurgence last year. To me, I don't think it's Jordan Love. Uh, getting drafted all of a sudden pissed him off and made him work harder. I think he just got more used to the offense in a second year, and you saw that things got a little bit better ran. They were a little bit quicker, and just moving it a little bit quicker had huge results. So that's what I think, you know, again, not exactly a hot take. Aaron Rodgers is good at football. The Packers offense was good last year. Yeah, they were the best offense in the league last year. But I wanted to really talk about why it was so good. It's very compelling, I think. And again, I know some people will say, ah, quarterback, you know, only having success against these with these zone buster plays. You know, any quarterback could do that. Well, no, they can't. And they especially can't do it uh, as well as Rodgers did. And of course, Rodgers still had plenty of success against man. The only time you really saw any signs of this offense getting slowed down was when you had a team like Tampa Bay, for example, who could double team Devontae Adams and then still win their, you know, had deep enough corners to be able to win against like, you know, uh, a Marquez Valdez Scantling and stuff and a Robert Tunyon. They had a linebacker who could cover him, stuff like that. That's really the only time we saw them get slowed down whatsoever. So uh, this was an incredible offense last year. And again, uh, I still stand by. I think they could use an extra receiver, but that's just 
they could use an extra receiver basically to become a you know historically good offense and who knows they got some guys who could come in and be that uh you know, receiver, you got that, that Amari Rogers selection. And if he turns into a number two, look out, this offense could go from great to historically great, I think. So, uh, yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.